Power Stack. G'day frothers, uh, welcome back to the bench. I am back on the battery bandwagon today and uh, this time I'm going to be looking at the DeWalt Power Stack. So your fancy batteries are all the rage at the moment, uh, partly, well, in large part, because of this little fella here. So this is DeWalt Power Stack. Uh, it doesn't actually advertise it, but it is only 1.7 amp hours. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, write that on the side of me either if that was my capacity. So I'm just gonna run through some tests today with this little guy and uh, for a, a sort of more even comparison than the, the five amps I usually use, I got a two amp hour battery here, um, which I bought special for this. I wouldn't normally get a, such a small battery, not much use to me. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's compare these things. So straight out of the box, you'll see it's substantially smaller. Uh, it's got a bit of gray on there. Uh, you know, it's quite a bit more of an updated uh, form factor. Uh, but yeah, the, the size, like look at the footprint difference there. Really good, really nice improvement. Uh, that alone is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a modest improvement just having a smaller product. Uh, feels about the same weight. 324, 364, okay, slightly lighter. So, slight improvement for the lights. Uh, the lights are a bit brighter, uh, they are white now for some reason. Uh, they actually stay on, which is great, unlike my battery. Uh, my 5 amp hour, where you have to hold it down. So that's a nice little improvement. Actually, this is 2020. This one's made in 2020. This one is made in 2021. Okay, so there you go. DeWalt has actually fixed that annoying little problem already. Um, but yeah, a little bit disappointing that they didn't go for higher resolution on the battery indicator there. I mean, 4 or even 5 pips is pretty standard now. Like, I mean, the Aldi battery even just has a straight digital display, you know. Come on guys, it's a bloody expensive battery. This little bastard was 150 bucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, a little bit lighter, much smaller, um, and it is a stack of pouch cells in there. So uh, what the hell is that? Well, your standard batteries in most of these power tools are 18650 cells. Uh, so this is a very common lithium ion battery. And you can see that it's sort of like a bigger AA battery. But uh, obviously you're gonna be limited to basically lining up a whole bunch of them inside there. Whereas if you just have a free form pouch, I mean, you can kind of make it however big you want. Like a pouch, pouch battery is sort of what, you know, you might find in your, in your mobile device there, something like that. They are said to have some advantages. Uh, okay, so the box reckons this has 50% more power and a 25% smaller pack and double the lifetime. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. Footprint versus DC183 battery. Okay, so yeah, they're comparing to this one. So, onto the testing. Uh, joining us on this journey is our old favourite, the Killer B, the DCH172. Uh, and I decided to use this one because basically this is a small battery and this is a small drill. Makes sense, right? Uh, makes sense in my head anyway. But the power stacks aren't always going to be small, so I figured uh, I'd see how it goes on a bigger tool. In fact, the biggest DeWalt tool I've got, the DCH263, which is... Uh, actually, this one doesn't have a nickname. What do you reckon? Big Banana? Yeah, oh well, let's go with Big Banana for now. Let's see if that name sticks. Uh, all right, so let's just see about the no load speed first before we do any testing. So standard battery in there. Ten fifty seven. Power stack. Ten fifty eight. Oh boy, it sounds exactly the same. Standard battery. Eleven seventy power stack. Eleven seventy. So there's no difference in the no load speed between these two batteries. So that tells me that 
the power stack isn't going to make the tool drill any faster under like normal conditions. So that brings us on to the testing. Uh, first test we've got is a granite runtime test. So I whacked either of those batteries into the killer B, uh, chucked in a 10 millimeter bit and drilled in 60 mil, which is about what you want for installing stuff like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Power stack 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. And the second test is with both batteries on the big banana. Same deal, but drilling 12 millimeter holes by 70 mil. And that's the kind of thing you'll do for installing, well, this kind of sleeve anchor, all sorts of stuff, really. Okay, so the standard 2 amp hour battery got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 compared to the power stack which was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hmm, interesting. Alright, so we got heaps of good data out of this little test. Uh, like my grandpa always said, you get tons of data when you're poking holes in rocks as long as you film it and put it on YouTube. Oh boy. Um, so, uh, the first, so the first metric we get out is just how many holes is the runtime. So the Killer B got 17 holes with the standard battery versus 15 with the power stack. The power stack, the power stack did a little bit better than you'd expect based solely on the capacity. So uh, 1.7 amp hours is 15% uh, smaller capacity, but it only did 12% less work. So, uh, you know, not too bad. And with the big banana, she got 11 holes with the standard versus 10 holes with the power stack. If you base the runtime solely on the capacity, you'd expect 15% less work for this guy, but it actually did 9% less work. So, you know, a little, little bit of an improvement there. So one thing I did notice with the power stack though, it didn't wind down really. It just kept going and then died in the ass in the last couple of seconds of drilling. So, you know, with your standard batteries often for the last hole or two or three or four even, it'll start working a little slower. Whereas this one was like almost binary. It just went, fell over like in just a few seconds. So just take a look at that. So with the big banana and the standard battery, I actually had to stop and chuck this thing in the fridge a couple of times because it uh, cut out and it would still have, you know, two bars maybe, um, but then it would just sort of stop drilling. So I figured that was due to overheating and uh, chucked it in the fridge for, you know, a while, came back, did a bit more drilling. So in terms of just uh, general work handling, big improvement for the, for the power stack there. So uh, the next metric we can get out of this test is the drilling speed. So, you know, I just film it with a normal camera and uh, I can time how long it takes, just like I do with my normal speed tests. So uh, let's see how the speed went with the Killer B.
So I averaged out a few of each of them and came up with 21.3 seconds and 21.43 seconds. So no difference at all there. Uh, wasn't really a super hard task for this drill. We weren't working it too hard. So yeah, no surprises there either really. Now for the big banana, I actually lost some of the footage so I wasn't able to time it so accurately, uh, but I'm pretty sure it went about the same speed as well. So when the drilling was done, I took some photos. Photos? Hedos, maybe? Nah, infrared still photons. Yeah, photos uh, of the batteries to see how hot, how hot they were getting. 55 degrees for the standard and 35 for the, uh, for the power stack. Uh, I don't speak Fahrenheit, but for reference, 35 degrees is a kind of warm summer day here in Australia, basically. So barely heated up at all. Uh, whereas this one is oh, 55 is, I don't know, world record in Death Valley kind of temperatures. Uh, but big, big improvement there. So heating is a problem with electronics and it's a problem with batteries. And around 55 degrees is when your batteries really start degrading. So, so in terms of two times lifetime, like they ad advertise, I reckon that's, uh, that's looking pretty true. Now the wallaby eyed amongst you may have noticed also that in those runtime tests I started uh, with the standard and then the power stack uh, and then in the big banana test I did power stack and then standard and the reason for that was this battery was struggling so hard. I did these tests all on the same Arvo like just back to back uh, and with the big bananas test it just struggled. This thing died in the ass. Uh, when it was finally done it wouldn't charge up. Whereas this one just went straight back, back on the charger and you know, no worries at all. This guy went from full charge, full discharge, full charge, back to back with bit, without heating up barely at all. Uh, and it handled it great. This one had to be kept in the fridge. It seemed to take forever to charge. Um, so yeah, that was another big improvement just in terms of usability for the, uh, for the power stack because like, if you're running through batteries real quick, uh, doing whatever you're doing, uh, this one is gonna be back in action straight away. Whereas this one, you're gonna have to wait for it to cool down and then it's also gonna take longer to charge. So based on those observations, I decided to just see how different these two are in terms of just straight up charging. So uh, I decided to uh, let them cool down, just equilibrate to normal, you know, straight room temperature uh, so it's the middle of winter here in Australia and it was an ungodly uh, 17 degrees here in the garage. So if you check out the Hedos, uh, you'll see that. I then put these on to charge uh, and then timed them to see how long they took. So the power stack finished charging in a curly one under 23 minutes, whereas a standard battery took just over 32 minutes. So that is a 15% uh, difference in capacity, but a 30% difference in, uh, in charging time. So there you go. This guy uh, actually charges up quicker too. So whatever it is about the pouch batteries, they're gonna be uh, you know, lasting longer. They're gonna be running cooler. They're gonna be back in the fight quicker after you've been using them. Uh, I reckon this is a real winner in terms of technology that DeWalt has uh, decided to go with here. So uh, unfortunately, they're only small right now. It's, it's literally the smallest battery I own. I would never normally buy a 1.7 amp hour battery, but uh, I'm glad I did because it's been really interesting. And guys, one more thing that I noticed uh, doing this video was the wobble that I mentioned in the last video with the Killer B was gone uh, when I did the first drill with the standard battery. Uh, and then it was back when I did the power stack drill. So what the fuck is going on there? Well, uh, I dare say the power stack does not make your drill more wobbly, 
But I did a little bit more looking and it turns out it's the bloody drill bit. So uh, these are the De Trois uh, drill bits. I guess they're made in France or something. Uh, these ones, I do like them because they drill fast, they work really nicely and they're pretty cheap. But it turns out, look at that. I found the source of the wobbling and it wasn't actually the drill. I don't know how well you can see that, but if you look at the chisel tip there, this side is bigger than that side. So essentially, uh, the little chisel point there isn't actually put in centered on the drill bit. It's actually offset slightly to that side. So that is the cause of the bloody wobble. I went blaming the DeWalt tool itself. How dare I? I can't believe it. Uh, I guess I'll throw myself at the, at the mercy of, uh, who is it? Stanley Black & Decker. Uh, Apologise for defaming you guys that you made such a wobbly little tool. Uh, because it was, in fact, a fucking drill bit. Um, but, you know, like my grandpa always said, don't trust a Frenchie with your bits. So, anyway, guys, uh, I'll leave it there. I'll see you back here for uh, for the second part of the power stack journey. Because, uh, yeah, it's been been pretty interesting. But I thought this was uh, stacks of good stuff for, for just one video. I'm already doing two drills, two batteries, all that. So, uh, I'm doing power testing. Didn't really test the power output of this little guy so uh that's what i got for you next time and uh thanks so much for watching so please do subscribe if you haven't already thanks to everyone who has that is the best way to support me or any youtuber that you like because you know what those bloody ads you've got to watch at the start of the video we don't get a cut of that ad revenue until we get enough subscribers so smash that subscribe button please and uh anyway i'll catch you later sorry <laughs> I will scratch you later uh, for the next part of the PowerStack video.